Dom Shannon Wilkerson here with Brandon Como starting the second hour of today's broadcast. Hope everybody's wrapping up a wonderful Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining us on your drive home. And we are going to now talk about more political correctness and accusations of racism mm -hmm. run amok. Yeah. Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. And what I'm talking about is now the allegations that the visualization of some sort of cotton is racist. Yeah. Maybe you heard the story about a lady, uh, Danielle Ryder, went into Hobby Lobby and saw that Hobby Lobby, for their fall decorations and the things that they were selling that they had on display, had cotton uh, that you could put on display, I guess, as a centerpiece or something like that. But there was a big to-do about this because... Now accusations of racism are being made and uh, lobbed against Hobby Lobby mm -hmm. as if cotton is now the symbol. Cotton is now turning into the new symbol of racism. Mm -hmm. uh, there was also a university that went on uh, that went to the president's house. Some members of the university recently went to the president of, of the university's house for a dinner and there was cotton on display there. And more accusations of racism occurred. There is a viral video on YouTube about some people that went on a field trip. And the field trip included visiting a cotton field. Mm -hmm. And that was deemed to be racist. Mm. So now cotton is evil <laughs> because slaves used to pick cotton. Mm -hmm. And so now visualizing seeing cotton is some type of a symbol for pro-slavery. Yeah. Now, this is another one of those just completely ridiculous things that exists right now in today's society. Why are we even talking about this? Ridiculous and an ignorance of history, even um, recent history, okay? All you have to go do, I mean, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> my wife comes from a family that, you know, her grandfather... Uh, used to pick cotton and made a great living off of it, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're white people, okay? So there are many white people that have, uh, you know, been cotton farmers uh, for a living. You look at the fact that slavery was, uh, you know, was was ended in the 1860s, okay? So there have been many people since that have been white people that have picked their own cotton. Yeah. Cotton cotton farming is not something that's just confined to slavery, yeah. okay? And it's amazing when you look at it. I was, I was reading some of the comments uh, to this, and... <clears throat> I was happy to see some uh, many African Americans get on and condemn this person for making yeah, me these too. goofy I, statements. I, that was encouraging. And, and let me say this one. Uh, let me point out the one that really uh, came out to me. Um, a, a lady named Miriam Lyon wrote, Seriously, I am an African American, probably old enough to be your mother. My family were slaves three generations ago. Looking for a fence where none is intended is ridiculous. Actually, this attitude is reverse racism. Yeah, it, it's another example of the sensitivity antenna mm -hmm. that we talk about that is always set on ultra high, mm -hmm. way too sensitive, looking for reasons to be upset, re looking for reasons of uh, to make accusations of racism, of bigotry, of all kinds of different politically incorrect titles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it is so discouraging that this is what the argument has come to that Hobby Lobby is now being accused of being racist simply because they are selling cotton. Now, what I'm going to tell you what's going to be next. If you wear a cotton shirt, mm. I mean, the whole cotton industry is now going to be under attack. <laughs> the way that this is being presented, because, hey, what's the difference between cotton and a cotton shirt? It's the same thing. So am I racist because now I'm wearing a cotton shirt? According to some of these, these people that are making the accusations, Yes, and it could be. It very well could be. I do think this is as much of an attack on Hobby Lobby as well because Hobby Lobby is seen yeah. as one of these companies that has conservative values who liberals have gone after over the years, have tied them up in court because of their stance on birth control. Mm -hmm. And I think when you put together someone that's looking to try to make themselves famous, that's trying to capitalize 
on all of this oversensitivity and this racial division that's going on right now, and you put a target like Hobby Lobby up there with a uh, with a, with a um, uh, a display that wasn't racist. It's something. It's a display you see in many different stores. I think Hobby Lobby was an easy target yeah, for I someone agree. like this. I, I agree. They, they've got the the identity mm-hmm. of being conservative. Yes, because of their position with birth control mm-hmm. and. You're very well maybe right. We not we might not be having this conversation if the cotton was being sold at Walmart mm-hmm. or at Target mm-hmm. or any other place. My curiosity is what's Hobby Lobby going to do about it? They haven't responded yet. They haven't responded, okay? Mm-hmm. But I'm wondering if they're going to respond. I wonder if they're going to take it off the shelf. Some tells me they won't. I don't think so either. If they can go toe-to-toe in court oh, yeah. with some of these liberal fools, yeah. okay, I don't think they're going to bow down to this fool. No, I, I agree completely. However, uh, I mentioned that university earlier. Mm-hmm. The president did I- issue an apology. Oh, man. Okay, the president did issue an apology. Oh, it was so terribly insensitive. I, I, I didn't, I'm so sorry. Why? You didn't do anything wrong. Oh, no. I know. I just don't, uh, I don't get it at all. I mean, I get it, mm-hmm. but it's just, it, it waters down the real accusations yes. of racism when they need to be made. Mm-hmm. That's my opinion. When you start calling everything so many different things racist that truly aren't Mm -hmm. then when real racism exists the identity of that title loses its weight yeah and that's the real dangerous part i agree two three two fifteen forty two we got some callers ready and waiting to get in on the program caller you up next go ahead Uh, my mom and daddy and my grandparents all pick cotton Mm mm-hmm and they were born in Abbeville, Louisiana, and I'm white. Mm-hmm. So that was their living. Yeah. That's what they did for a living. They corded their cotton, they combed it, they weaved it, and they made clothes. And uh, there was nothing racist about it. It's just something poor people did. But as far as racism goes, I read a story online about this, this, these college kids that had gone somewhere and one was eating a banana, yeah. And he threw the banana peel, and it happened to stick to a tree trunk. It happened at Ole Miss. And yeah. some kids came along. Did you read that? Yeah, it was at Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Those, those kids came along and said that was racist, yeah. and yeah. it made them uncomfortable to see that banana peel in the tree. Yeah, and they had to go run off to their it. safe space. <laughs> they had to go run I mean, off to I their don't safe even space. Get that it, mentality. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it, it just. It's pathetic in so many different ways. Thanks for the call. Thank you so much. Appreciate caller. you listening. All right, two three two fifteen forty two. Caller, you up next? Go ahead. The big deal is left has made being victim fashionable. Yes. He wants to be the victim, and it's hard to take accusations like like being called a racist serious anymore because it's it's just rampant. It it makes it tough to investigate each and every one because you don't want to you don't want to take it seriously. Because anything and everything is racist. Well, it does. And then at the same time, though, you don't want that charge against you because when you have that charge levied against you, especially as a company, man, it it, for some, they want to bow to it because they don't want to be seen that way because, again, it's hard to beat on on a bad scale being labeled a racist. It is the the second worst label that you can carry, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, today. It's second only to being a pedophile. Oh, yeah. But when you carry that label of being a racist, or if your company or business has that label mm-hmm. of being a racist, man, you're done. You they will come after you on social media and they will not stop. And if it and you have to prove yourself innocent. You've yeah. got to prove that you're not racist. That's you're exactly right. right. And how do you do that when you've got some when you've already gotten you, it, when a story about you mm-hmm. has gone viral, for example, it's too late. There's nothing you can yep. do about it. And it's such cowardice, in my opinion, too, because when you have the people that are on Facebook like this person, instead of and I'm, I'm, instead of confronting Hobby Lobby on this, and again, it, was, it would be stupid for her to do that, but it, it's such a cowardly way of going about doing it and putting it out on social media and making a complaint against the company and just trying to call them out there. It, it just The way that it's done on social media, to me, is just such a cowardly way because you hide behind your names. Well, you don't uh, even have names. to have... Well, yeah, you don't even have names to... You can have a time. fictitious name. That's yeah. exactly mm-hmm. right. I could go and create an email account mm-hmm. and then a Facebook account and find some picture and come up with a name 
am, I mean, I could be Amos Ponder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay, Amos, that's it. I'm, I'm Amos Ponder. Right. I can get a picture, put it up there, start requesting friends, yeah. start building a, a network, and nobody has any idea that it's actually Shannon Wilkerson. Right, and you know, that's, and that's my point where people, right? What you're seeing more of in society now is instead of addressing the problems they have with each other, they're putting it out over Facebook and trying to just drum up support and likes and comments and such so that way they can get their support that way instead of addressing the person that they have the problem with. And what's sad is that the person, this person would actually even have a problem with Hobby Lobby over it. It's Mm -hmm. just absolutely ridiculous. All right, Shannon, we got to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we will continue the conversation as the phone lines are absolutely lit up right now. 232-1542, you're listening to Offside. Brandon uh, Como, Shannon Wilkerson here with you, and we're talking about a woman's post slamming Hobby Lobby for raw cotton uh, decoration going viral and the ridiculousness of that. We've got a caller who's been waiting patiently over the commercial break to get in. Caller, you're up next on Offsides. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so you were saying about the, the worst thing, uh, second worst thing to be uh, called racist. Right now, I think that word has been thrown around so much that <laughs> it's almost, uh, it, it, to me, it's, it's, it's numbing. Yeah. It, it's, 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 it's not even worth being even said anymore. It, it's been used so much the last eight years, going on nine years now. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, it's not even being used properly. So to me, it's, it's useful. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree uh, completely. And, and uh, unfortunately, not everybody agrees with us. A lot of people still give that that title and that identity so much weight, and it's negative but there's weight. There's no weight to it anymore. There's no weight to it anymore. Yeah. There's none. It, yeah. It, there's a nil factor when it comes to it because they use it for absolutely everything. Yeah, it's, it's like the little boy that cried wolf. Yeah. Yeah, that, I hear you. It. They cried wolf so much. Yeah, that when the wolf came, I, they all, he I'm killed in, all the yeah, sheep. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm in my 50s. I've gone to school. We've all gone to school together. We've all had the same education. We've all had the same opportunity. Thanks for the call. Appreciate you listening. 232-1542. And I add this as well. One of the comments uh, reading through in regards to this stupid Facebook post. Um, Jeanette Brown, seriously, I'm an African-American woman, and I don't find this at all offensive. I'm trying to figure out why you did. Absolutely, there's a lot going on in our country right now in regards to race, but please don't add to the conversation this way. Don't read into things that are not there. For sure, some stuff is deliberately hurtful or insulting, but some is not. I thought that was very well stated yeah, as well. it is. And, you know, I found online many other examples mm-hmm. uh, of how racism, how, how people identify or call certain acts or uh, behavior mm-hmm. racist that yeah. it really isn't. Mm-hmm. One thing that I found was that it is considered very racist if you call a black person articulate. So if you refer to some, if, if you refer to, now listen, I may say that about somebody white, black, brown, Asian, but if you do say it about somebody, if you, if, if you say, yeah, I met or I interviewed, we have a new employee, a new coworker, and you're talking about that person, and one of the ways that you describe them as, as being articulate and they happen to be black, that's considered racist. But you know who actually helped to make that kind of what it is today? Because, um, you know, as a matter of fact, Sean Hannity used to play all the time the comments from Joe Biden when he described President Obama yeah. and talking about him as articulate. Yeah. And they played it to kind of laugh at Joe Biden for saying that. Yeah, but, but it's okay for Joe Biden to say it. Well, it is, <laughs> but that's why it's been brought up because you've had some on the conservative side that have laughed at, um, you know, those on the liberal side uh-huh. for saying stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one reason why calling someone black articulate now is seen as something as being racist because I think that has a lot to do yeah. with what went on there. Well, too. What, what, what I had read about that particular mm-hmm. description was that if you were to identify this person who happens to be black, as being articulate, it suggests that it's something unusual. Exactly. It, it suggests that, uh, oh, wow, he's black, but he's also articulate. Mm-hmm. When you might just be using it to describe that person. Mm-hmm. It's all it's all in the in the meaning on the yeah. inside. And, you know, a lot of times we can't really know what's in a person's heart, but a lot of people are making assumptions about what they know that are in people's hearts. That's the problem. 232-1542. Caller, you're on offsides. Go ahead. So you guys 
are looking at this wrong. See, we turned this into a drinking game called What Are We Offended By Today? <laughs> oh, man. The way no, you, the yeah, way everybody's going to be drunk. Well, yeah, but, I mean, it's South Louisiana. We already are. <laughs> Good um, point. <laughs> the, the way it works is you actually turn on national news. Well, not Fox, but someone else. You actually turn on national news, and for the first 45 minutes, whenever they cry about something, you have to take a drink. And if you have to retreat to the bathroom, that's your safe space. <laughs> uh, very good. Nice. Something tells you you won't make it to the first commercial. <laughs> well, I mean, then again, nobody watches commercials anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> another good point. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. All right, 232-1542, 232-1542. All right, Caller, you're up next on Offsides. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, make sure your radio is turned down for us, please. And we'll be happy to get you on if you are now ready. I'm ready. All right. Go for it, caller. All right. Hello? Go, yeah, Yeah, go you're ahead. on. All right. Hey, I, uh, what I want to say is this prejudice thing. Yeah. It is uh, not... It, 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 they, they blew it out of control. Okay. Now, I understand that our ancestors did bad things back in the day. But that was hundreds of years ago. Now, come on, you all got to get over that. And if you ask me, the blacks are the most prejudiced people in this country than anybody else. Okay. All right. Thanks for the call. Well, you know, one of the things he just said was on the list that I found. What's that? What, that if you have the opinion that slavery existed a long time ago and slavery is over, and so therefore people aren't racist, that opinion is considered to be racist. Okay, so I swear I'm looking right at it. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, okay, I'm looking at it. Also, if you're offended, get, get ready, uh -huh. okay? I'm glad you're sitting down. Okay. Get, if you get offended when you feel you've been perceived as a racist, <laughs> then you're racist. Okay, so if, you're, so if somebody calls you, Brandon, a racist because mm -hmm. of something that you said, and you're offended by being called that, then you're a racist. <laughs> it's just all become one big that, mind game. That's what game. I'm saying. It, it, mind it, games I'm reading themselves. it. I'm saying, wait a minute. You're a racist if you're, if you're offended by being called a racist. But what if you aren't a racist and <laughs> they call you a racist? And so, therefore, you're going to be offended. But the fact that you are offended makes you a racist. My head, it, it's crazy. My head I feel hurts. like I'm drunk. Yeah. 232-1542. Caller, you up next. Go ahead. Go ahead, caller. <laughs> Hello. All right, let's go right. ahead and move on. All right, 232-1542. Uh, callers, again, please make sure that your radio is turned down mm -hmm. uh, when you're calling because that means you're going to be getting in very soon. All right, 232-1542. Uh, caller, you up next. Go ahead. <laughs> the problem is today? <laughs> caller, you got, are you there? Caller. <laughs> I think all of our callers are at happy hour. Hey! All, of our, all of our callers are at happy hour right now. Anybody there? They're playing the uh, drinking game that the caller was talking about I think about so. Earlier. All right, let's try this one now. Caller, you are up next. Go right on ahead. Yeah, I think y'all are. There we go. Just, just bringing up this stupid subject y'all talking about. That's y'all a bunch of racists. How so? Uh, how but so? You're bringing up this stupid stuff, man. This stupid. But, uh, you know, I know it. Stupid. It is. It, it's stupid. It, you, you know, and that's the point of the conversation. It, it's pretty stupid. Do you Why think? You let me ask you. Let me ask you, just so we can get your opinion. Do you think that Hobby Lobby selling cotton is is racist on their part? Oh, no. Okay. Good. Good. Then See, we can agree. Then you're more reasonable than this. Uh, than this Absolutely. woman that was putting very, stuff on very Facebook. Very, very reasonable. Thank you, caller. Yeah. All right, two three two fifteen forty two. I don't think he knows what the, he, he his head just exploded. <laughs> we just complimented him. I know. All right, you're up next on uh, offsides. Go ahead, caller. All right, well, I had just called. I uh -huh. got hung up on or something. I'm sorry, we had a bad connection. <laughs> well, we're glad you got back on. Go ahead. All right, well. <laughs> okay, well, your radio is <laughs> you going in the background. We can't. Uh, that's Listen, not everybody. Work. Okay, when you call into offsides. <laughs> When you could, when you dial the number, turn your radio down because when you call and we answer and then your your radio is on, then it, there's this strange little feedback and and uh, it's the end of the world. That's what's causing you to be confused as you're talking with yeah. us, unfortunately. And we want to hear some of that smart knowledge that you got. Yeah, because so, I'm I'm confused going in. Two three two fifteen forty two. Caller, you up next? Go ahead. Hello. Hi. All righty. 
So I think everybody's playing the drum game, but that was just my laugh for the moment because <laughs> of all these calls coming in. That's yeah. funny. Uh-huh. Um, so this is my thing on the racist thing. Mm-hmm. I feel like that as a white lady with black friends and lots of them that I don't know how black people feel compared to even the white people that I'm around, but I'm so sick of all the racist stuff because it's gotten so ugly that it makes it very uncomfortable with the people that you work with, that you're around, that you spend daily time with. And I find that it's bringing up stuff that's in people. I think the ugliness that's probably not even, they probably never acted like that before. And then all of a sudden, they feel like their people are being picked on or being messed with. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it becomes about this racist thing. But I know that after things happen, it's very, very uncomfortable. And people are so much watching that you're around not to talk about anything, not to say anything, because you don't know how your coworkers even feel about that kind of stuff. Yeah, everybody, and, everybody you know, is on edge. Everybody's on edge, and it's very difficult for people to be comfortable around one another because you're concerned that you you may be said something wrong, or they may be feeling a certain way. Let me let me point something out to you, caller. Uh, earlier, I pulled up a internet listing of things uh, that are now considered racist. In the beginning of your comment, you mentioned that you had black friends and that you had black friends that you work with and uh, just made that general comment. That now is considered racist. If a white person feels that they need to call out the fact that they have black friends, that is now considered racist. Yes, not everything to do with anything you say is racist these days. Right. That's the problem. It's gotten... It's, and it's gotten so bad, though, that I feel like that it's created things and people who would have never, ever felt that way. I mean, I grew up playing I, playing with my neighbors that were black, yeah. and I never had that kind of issue before, ever. But I even went to black churches, and I mean, it's a shame you got to say a black church because, you know, where I go, it's everybody, all races, you know, but they're different different stuff. But I had a lady today that I had to do an assessment through work and the people on the other line, it was a three party line and asked the lady what her race was. Mm-hmm. You would have swear somebody knocked her over the head. <laughs> and she said, I don't play that game. I'm, I'm no race. I'm, I'm people. That's what I am. People. Mm-hmm. I got and another like, one for I'm, you. I got another one for you. I hate to interrupt, but you just said something that uh, something else that is on this list. <clears throat> but go ahead. I'm sorry. Let me pull it up a minute. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say is that it's just <laughs> not, I, I almost really agree with the person that was on the phone that I think we ought to do away with all names of race. Mm-hmm. We're people. Yeah. We're all people. We bleed the same color. Yeah. Cut us and we bleed. That's you know? what's on the list. Okay. That if you say that we are all the same, and you say that you don't see the color difference between people, that is also considered racist. <laughs> Why isn't it that we can't just be proud of the race that we come from and quit accusing each other of being racist? Just be proud of the ancestry that you have, the struggles that your ancestry has overcome, um, because there's it's not just African-Americans that have overcome you know hardships. There's many races that have as well. And just come together and quit worrying about calling each other names. But again, I think people like this are playing into the uh, the politics that are going on right now, uh, this divisive form of politics that's been long used by Democrats. Uh, that, uh, As a matter of fact, Hillary Clinton was, uh, was a huge part of this, this identity politics. And these people don't realize that they are pawns in the, the, the identity politics that are being played coming out of Washington. Number nine on the list, what you just said. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It's racist to say that we should just trust and respect each other. Oh, man. I'm reading it. I'm, I'm reading. I'm looking right at it. You, you know, and that's you know, why it has gotten so. Yeah. It, it's just so. And what's bad about this, Brandon, mm-hmm. is that when real racism occurs right. and needs to be called out mm-hmm. and identified, now that title is so is going to become so watered down 
that it's like what the caller said. It's the, the previous caller, I believe. It's like the little boy that cried wolf. Yeah. Could you imagine if we took all of our conversation and put it through that filter that you've got going right there? Can't say anything. Can't say anything. Uh-uh. <laughs> the grass is green. Well, you see, you, you identified it as a color. <laughs> Thanks for uh, listening, everybody. Y'all stay tuned. We're going to be right back on Offside. Uh, okay, everybody. We sure do appreciate you listening. We are wrapping up our 5 o'clock hour of our last segment talking about all these ridiculous claims of racism. The most recent one being launched towards Hobby Lobby for selling cotton. Mm. Uh, I unfortunately, I, I mean, I hope that they don't go after people that wear cotton shirts because it's all I wear. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I can't wear anything that's not 100% cotton. It drives <laughs> me crazy. And so, man, if uh, if they go after, when I say go after, I mean, if they start attacking on social media and labeling people that wear cotton shirts racist because mm. it, it, it kind of falls under the same category. Now cotton is evil. I bet money this person was wearing cotton as they were posting this picture. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> Let's go to the phone lines. We've got some people that have been patiently waiting, and we certainly appreciate that. All right. Uh, we've got a lady on the line right now who wants to get in. Uh, call her. Thank you so much for holding. Go ahead. Sure. Hi. This has to be top of the list of the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> um, several years ago when that terrible hurricane hit Haiti and practically wiped out uh, uh, the community, uh, one of our August legislators said, it was a racist hurricane because it only killed black people. Oh yeah, my that's ridiculous. God. How can the hurricane know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, seriously, how that's can the Trump hurricane start up know? that hurricane? That's why. That's what it is. <laughs> it's Trump. It's all Trump. It is all Trump. Thanks Thank for the you, call. Ma'am. We appreciate you listening. 232-1542, 232-1542. Uh, one of our listeners, Cody, says, I think it's more of a power trip for people like that. What's easier to have power than the post on Facebook? Like I said, when you get those likes and those comments uh, going in your favor, kind of gives you that false sense of of having power and having a voice. Uh, when really, what voice do you have? Yeah, and and, it's and quite really, ridiculous. Yeah, and really, you're pretty cowardly because you're not confronting the person. You're just talking about them. Yep. And and putting them on blast. All right, two three two fifteen forty two. Caller, you up next? Go ahead. Hey, how y'all doing tonight? Hey, good. Uh, y'all always have some interesting topics. Look, I I have never gotten hung up on uh, all of this. Uh, you know, and I'm very comfortable around people, no matter who they are. You know, I mean, if they, as long as as long as they're not jack, pardon the expression, jackasses, then that's fine. But I, I filled out, you know, I, I have a good sense of humor. I they had, a, I had filled out one thing, and they said race, and I put hundred meters, and then they sex, and I put uh, too long, I can't re- even remember. You know, I put on those things, you know, kind of, <laughs> you know, just having fun with it. And I have my friends, uh, you know, just humor, and I, you know. I have friends, and, and you know, it's not cliche, but friends from all races and stuff like that. And we, you know, we go back and forth. And we, ha- and, and I, I now I'm maybe honest with you, I don't think most people, whether they're black, whether they're white, whether they're white, really this believes all this stuff. It's it's a it's a, a vocal minority of people who do that, and then people weak minded that get you know get under that spell you know but if you talk to most people most people are good and decent and have common sense and have a good sense of humor you know and, and i think that's what people need to remember we we hear the loud minority of irrational voices but if you really get down to talk to the average person you know they don't get caught up in all this you know they they you know they don't let this you know uh you know you know, people, there are legitimate concerns that everyone has, but I think most people are rational and they they don't, they don't fall under all that, you know? Yeah, I think you're right. So many of these loud voices represent such a small, small minority of our population. Unfortunately, they get the headlines. That's the problem. The real problem is they've got the media and they get all the headlines as if they're, well, they're as if they as if they are the majority. Well, if you don't pay attention to them and you continue to ignore and you continue to turn these people out, they're talking to a brick wall eventually. And that's what the thing is. You just don't – you don't give people an audience. I used to teach uh, – you know, uh, you know, I was a teacher one time and a disrupted kid or whatever. They had, when you gave them an audience, they acted up. When you took away their audience, you know, they just – Hey, they eventually calmed down. So hmm. I think that's where we got to look at, uh, you know, uh, not reacting to these people, 
the worst thing is to be ignored. It's not to be criticized, and 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 then you lose your relevancy. You know, that's a good point. And you know, and I'm very comfortable with all kinds of people. You know, and that's how I live my life. Thank very you, good. caller. Thank you. I, I love what that. you said there. It's it's um, getting ignored is just so much worse than being criticized. It, it's really to say you don't matter because when you're criticized. You obviously matter enough to be getting criticized, but when you're ignored, that really is the ultimate form of just basically telling someone you don't matter, you're not worth anything. Yeah, except in a marriage. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's okay. a whole different set that's of rules That's a whole right different there, subject. Buddy. Okay. <laughs> 232 Caller, you're up next. Go ahead. Yeah, is this the racist offside show? <laughs> yeah, according to some people, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, well, you're talking about race, so you're racist. Exactly. <laughs> That's all there is to it. But I try to. I'm. I'm trying to hope. Hopefully, I'll catch all top ten uh, racist comments that you're you're uh, reading about. But you would think the first person that they would uh, the blacks would be mad at. The, and I'm talking about the ones that can't get off the race issue, or the ones that captured them and put them on ships and brought them to the United States to sell them to white people. Hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a painful it wasn't, past. It wasn't yeah. white people mm-hmm. that went over there and captured them. They they sold themselves. Uh, and they, well, they, no, I understand what uh, you're talking I, about. I hear you, and that mm-hmm. did happen. Uh, unfortunately, it really doesn't carry much uh, mm-hmm. identity or weight in today's conversations. People but, don't want to people people don't want to really take a, a close look at history. Yes. and how it all how it all really unfolded. The the fact of the matter is that all they focus on mm-hmm. is the fact that there were white people, there were black people, white people owned the black people, and mm-hmm. the black people were mistreated. Yeah, I'm just sick of a society. We're just going backwards. We really are right now. This is just absolutely ridiculous that we still have this going on. Calder, thank you so much that we are not past all of this already. And, again, we are just truly going backwards. All right, Calder, you're up yeah. next. Go ahead. Yeah, all of this stuff reverts back to these narrow-minded folks that assumed everybody that was white in the South owned a slave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In 1900, the census in Lafayette, Paris, there was 1,850 people that lived here. Now, mm-hmm. how many of those people do you think were slaves? Uh, not many. What I can tell you is that most of the people that lived here and in Louisiana and the whole country pretty much were poor, unless you were very rich. You didn't have a slave. So to think that uh, we all were so rich that we had slaves is uh, is an understatement because we were just as impoverished as the slaves were. In fact, they were treated better than poor people because they were of value. So they need to kind of freshen up on their homework because uh, there's a lot more people getting treated a lot worse right now as we speak. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, caller. You. All right, two three two. Interesting point. Yeah, two three two fifteen four two. Got time for one more comment All before right. we have to go. Caller, you're up. Go ahead. Hello. And caller, you there? Hello. Uh-huh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I, I've had a little humor du jour. <laughs> well, thank <All> right. you. <laughs> How about uh, aspirin bottles and other medicines that have white cotton balls? Oh. Shoved into them. That's right. The capsules and aspirin and mm. everything for breaking up. How about yeah. that? How about Q-tips? Is that is that on? Yeah, is that on your list? <laughs> no, Q-tips aren't on the on the list. But there's some there's uh, other things. Um, you know, get offended if you get offended or hurt when someone calls you out on your oppressive behavior. <laughs> yeah. So basically, you know, the list gives you gives a lot of descriptions of if you disagree with somebody who believes that you are being oppressive or you are racist, then therefore that opinion makes you racist. Well, they better get in touch with Pfizer and Bristol Myers and all those companies and tell them to stop putting cotton balls in their aspirin bottles and everything else. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that I, was kind of funny. I and love another it. thing is, mm-hmm. uh, I guess people are watching HGTV Fixer Up or Joanna Gaines mm-hmm. is famous for using cotton balls in her decorations when they're doing a Fixer Up. Well, that's yeah. why they don't call her a racist and try to come after her. Yeah. Call her, thank, thank you, you so much. We do have to leave it there for today. Mark Levin's show coming up next here on News Talk 96.5 KPL.